family for 15 years, I get it. Um, but this is about one of the first experiences I had at that off license. This is called Cheese. Over the mount, past the unused gym equipment, past the wild horses and the free base oxygen tent, I've got five quid left and I'm going to spend it right. Hopped up on a libation luxury to see me through the night. Past the pedo joke shop and the boarded up bus stop as all the regulars from the Royal are ousted into the street by the cops. As the taxis all wait for their midnight departures, supping Imperial Pig Fart Ale and singing the hits of Frank Sinatra, I ease past the graffiti kings and park bench gangs with the early morning troubadours who live inside their vans, with the talking dogs all hustling for some biscuits, all ready for the action, only I found out that they've missed it. As the beat herders march in formation with the seers of Pearl Jam vision with enthusiasm for the mundane as they stand in the alleyway pissing, football chants and drive-by insults tuning in and out of my ears as I arrive at the early morning hub and I wait to get my beers. I shuffle in line at the 24 hour off license as a waterhead with one shoe warns the shopkeeper, this is your last chance. It was 10p cheaper for some Rizzlers only the night before, as he calls them a set of bastards, claiming he'll knock them to the floor. Next time the shutters aren't down is when he'll make his vengeful mark as he storms off in a rage back to his box in the park. Suddenly there's a tap on my shoulder as I turn to face the mystery man. Excuse me, bruv, he whispers in that detached tone that comes from too many cans. As I expect the usual bullshit, whether for spare change, a spare cig or a hand job, as he stares down the middle distance and I expect any second to be robbed. As the shop owners are called thieving cunts by the champ in the obligatory cap, I stand and wait to get my boobs as on the glass pane his knuckles wrap. As the mystery man gets my attention again while he reads his mind with reverse gears as he fumbles through a plastic bag and asks, do you want to buy some cheese? <laughs> At first, I think that he's speaking in tongues or using some kind of gut code. He'll probably try and sell me some magic beans or a sarcastic talking toad. As I play the game lightly, as one does in these situations, believing I'll get something exciting like disco biscuits or an LSD proclamation, as he opens up his shopping bag in the now quiet street we stand, I hand over my last fibre for something delightful and he places a block of cathedral cheese in my hands. <laughs> Well, judging by that, you're not easily offended. <laughs> Wait, it gets worse. Um, I have the glamorous job of being a warehouse operative for 70 hours a week, and you've always got some idiot who has no hygiene whatsoever. So this is called the Whopper. <laughs> they smell you coming before you arrive, usually about half an hour or so. That kind of odour you can't hide. I bet you wake the dead wherever you go. That scent can't be masked by cheap cologne. I bet you like to roll around in your own filth. And I can't say that I'd be surprised if that turned out to be true. Here comes the whopper. Smell the beef and onion sweat every time he gets out of his seat. Here comes the whopper. The, whopper, the Hindenburg disaster on legs. Smelling like dog shit in heat. No one can look you in the eye when you come around handing out jobs to do. You're a man that can only be described as all talk, no trousers, all fat and no poo. Pale complexion and zombie stride like a corpse that's been exhumed. Even a roll on could have denied that your family home is a portal Here comes the whopper, get your smelling salts and nose plugged. Here comes the whopper, like a kebab set on fire, then left in an unflushed bog. Here comes the whopper, brace yourself before you come over all faint. Here comes the whopper, have a bath for fuck's sake. Has anyone seen those god awful nationwide adverts where people are doing poetry? Yeah. The shit out of them. They're fucking awful. And like, I've, I do a lot of poetry nights in and around Leeds and you know, all over Yorkshire, really. And you've always got someone who's had their poem on an advert. So where's mine? <laughs> I've sat and listened to political outcries and seen people use poetry to combat their mental health. Emotional admissions and a few funny ones, I've written a couple myself. Spoken word that empowers passion for football and whatever other crap people like. Monologues about reality TV shows and a load of other dismal shite. I've seen beat pros recited cool and clean 15 minutes of my life that I'll never get back. I've sat through slams with clicking fingers hoping to get pissed and black out. It's only 30 seconds to promote or alert. I'm sure I could do that through articulate verse. Maybe something educational or slightly absurd. 
to inspire consumerism, even though I feel uncomfortable at the thought that my artistic integrity could become something evil and abhorrent, but I can't help wondering, where's my advert? Touchy feely subjects and the love of nature expressed by those who never know when to finish. Hoping for Age UK or the Red Cross, maybe Grace to appear with a contract and a sandwich. Gavin from Autoblast couldn't muster a rhyme. Maybe I should have taken up opera. No point holding out for it nationwide, because they're not keen on working class northerners. Maybe if I had one sonnet or even just a phrase that I could use many times over and over, it could get me a rotating scene on the TV every hour. Even though I know language is meant to pervert with playful enrichment that can sometimes disturb, I could cobble something together that is slightly demeaning to keep people purchasing what they don't need. So I can be on the small screen, maybe give practical advice, a haiku about terms and conditions. I'm getting sick of waiting. Where's my fucking advert? Uh, this one's called Working Man. Obviously nowadays you've got to work until you're dead, basically. So, uh, this is, yeah, this is kind of more of an imaginary poem. My mates are out for a mad one, a blinding all night sesh with a few tabs and a couple of jars to kiss away the working week's end. But I'm stuck being a boring cunt staying at home instead, clothed in numerous jumpers, debating whether or not I should get out of bed. I used to go three days straight without a wink of kick, now I have to take two days to brace myself before I take a trip. They're probably having the time of their lives while I'm desperately avoiding the bastard alarm clock to get me up in the morning. There's no play and no fun when you're constantly working. An alien species from a time slip beamed me aboard their ship, and they told me I could navigate through every corner of the universe as long as I'd help to defeat a group of space mercenaries who were tightening their grip to control the Federation planets. They told me I could be a Star Lord and a hero of the cosmos, then I remembered the meeting schedule with my fucked out of a boss. So I politely had to decline, even though they were quite insistent that an opportunity like this would never come around again. My X-Wing fantasies never become a reality when constantly working. Two fellas in black suits and shades, possibly government operatives, knocked on my door and inviting themselves into my digs, offering me a chance of a lifetime to uncover a secret organisation as a covert assassin with my travel and accommodation paid on Her Majesty's service, with my identity remaining hidden and a tidy sum at the end. Once the job was done, I told them I had overdue holidays coming my way in a few weeks, but they weren't willing to wait for they needed this doing quickly. So I had to show them to the door because my shift the next day started early. It's a shame constantly working because you miss out on so many opportunities. Thank you. <laughs> Don't worry, I won't be up here for much longer. Uh, this is more of a fairly topical one. I kind of avoid topical situations, but this one's called Weekends Don't Exist Anymore. <coughs> in between the days of drastic work and play, never have the time to stop and notice that half your life is on a production line, hoping very soon that you'll end your service. Then when you're at home, all you do is piss and moan about the fact your accommodation is much too dear, and when you're here, you're never too far from the place that's keeping you in arrears. Weekends don't exist anymore. 48 hours to recover has been narrowed to 24. Weekends are let never long enough because your free time is spent doing other stuff. Getting up on a morning to face the same routine, the fancy rotor app updated hourly tells you you've got six days holiday the company will pay as long as you take on overtime gladly. Can't take the day off because someone's got a cough, they probably won't be back until next week because the football's on and the wardens have gone, leaving you indefinitely up shit creek. Working until every sunset, never knowing life ends need to be met for getting the world outside. Extra hours added daily just to try and get ahead. Nothing better to do these days but labour until death. Because the kids need feeding, the tax man needs pennies, physically exhausted for heating while stone cold in a factory. Working hard for a future that will never arrive, hoping for a sick day just to make you alive. Weekends don't exist anymore. 48 hours to recover has been narrowed to 24. Days of rest are for those that can afford them because weekends don't exist anymore. Uh, I'll do a romantic one because uh, poets are essentially sloppy bastards. <laughs> right. If I can remember what it's called. Oh, uh, this one's called You're Never Alone With A Hand. <laughs> What's the opening one? Oh yeah. When you're in the mood but she's not broody, don't get upset, have a five finger party. When you're overcome with passion but she's on the rack and not wooed by your proposition that you'll go around the back, just cradle your balls and work the shaft because you're never alone with a hand. When you're on a dry spell and you have been for months and the horizontal disco won't ease those headaches of hers, 
Lower your blood pressure twice a day. Keep your hand in a bag of rice. Get your kicks your own way to ease those lonely nights. Go on a crusade of self-harm, because you're never alone with a hand. <laughs> any woman could be yours, any dog would fetch, but when you're on your toe grabbing the devil by the bones, it works out best. Nobody knows better, and nobody touches you like yourself. Train that iron grip of yours for the betterment of your health. Spend some time with your favourite gland, because you're never alone with a hand. Jesus. Right, I think that about wraps me up, so I'll end on this one. Somebody um, collared me one night at uh, open mic and demanded that I write a poem about crisps. So I did. This one's called Space Raiders. Thanks for having me. Cool. Uh, cloudy swirl burning a hole in my stomach from too many pints and laxative cigarettes. I need bulk to level my insides as I sigh upon realising that they've run out of pork pies. What crisps have you got? I drunkenly inquire as my guts groan like a death metal choir. There's deep fried Cajun squirrel, flame rub possum with ginger spice. I'd be happy with ready salty rather than dorset cream and fusions of rice. What happened to salt and vinegar? These new concoctions blag me head. Is it too much to ask for a bag of space raiders instead? Culinary fusions for three quid a bag when all I want is a little snack. Nothing fancy, nothing debonair. 20% crisp, 80% air. Peaking duck with hoisin sauce is too much for me. I want something simple, but I'm accused of being too fussy. Saute donkey with deli sensations make me feel sick, as I consider popping to the office for some frazzles or chipsticks. These newfangled delicacies can't appetise my needs. I'm a simple man with simple tastes. Can I just have a bag of space raiders, please? Right, thanks very much. <laughs>